So this is the first in a series of uh, screencasts on geometric group theory, but it's a sequel to the series of screencasts on hyperbolic geometry. Uh, I'll start with just defining the, a notion of negative curvature, which applies for metric spaces. We give more than one definition, but for the first definition, I have to restrict the class of metric spaces. Okay. So to do that, let's first look at a metric space. XD is a metric space. And throughout, I'll assume that it's complete. Okay. Every metric space I consider will be complete, certainly not compact in general. Okay. You can assume separable if you're, uh, um, without any serious loss of generality. Okay. But first, we look at geodesics in this metric space. So a geodesic gamma mapping 0, 1 to x is a map Mean, which means a continuous function such that the length of gamma is the distance between gamma of 0 and gamma of 1. Okay. More accurate way to say this is a map from 0, 1 to x is a geodesic if its length is the distance between gamma of 0 and gamma of 1. Well, what do I mean by length here? This is what is uh, in analysis often called the bounded vari total variation. So length of gamma, what we do is we look at 0, 1 and subdivide it. So I'm looking at points T1, T2, etc. And this is going to be Tm, this is going to be T0. Okay, and then for such a partition, I look at the sum i equals 1 to n of the distance between gamma of Ti and the previous point, gamma of Ti minus 1. And I take the supremum over all 0, uh, being equal to t0, which is less than t1, etc., which is less than tn, which is 1. Okay, you could do this for any interval. So what this is saying is that you partition it and look at the distance between successive pairs of points, add this up, and take the supremum over all partitions. This may be infinite, of course. Okay, so the above equation says that the length is finite and equal to the distance. Okay. Unless, of course, we have spaces where we allow distances to be infinity, in which case we uh, interpret it appropriately. So, is an exercise any subsegment of a geodesic is a geodesic. Okay. This is an exercise that. You must do if it's not obvious. The point here is that this just follows from the triangle inequality. So gamma from R to X is a geodesic if gamma from restricted to AB is a geodesic for all AB. Okay. So this is again a definition. So the fact that Restricting geodesics to subsegments gives you geodesics, allows you to define geodesics in this manner for infinite or even half infinite uh, domains of definition. So we'll be looking at geodesic metric spaces for the first definition of negative curvature. So these are the facts. So, so, so x definition here is that x is a uh, geodesic metric space, assume that it's a complete metric space, if there are geodesics between every pair of points, so for all p, q, and x, there exists gamma mapping 0, 1 to x geodesic, such that gamma 0 is p and gamma 1 is q. Interestingly, there is a characterization of this. It's that there is a midpoint between P and Q for all P and Q. That's there's a point R, so that this distance and this distance, this is half distance PQ. Okay, and this is also half distance PQ. So if I have a complete metric space so that there are midpoints, then in fact this is a uh, geodesic metric space. So what are the examples? Well, there's Euclidean space. 
there is the hyperbolic plane which we have seen we saw the geodesics there and in general Riemannian manifolds which is not really what I'll consider okay but to make this clear let's look at a couple of non examples so the first one is if I took s1 with distance between z1 z2 is mod z1 minus z2 that is to say I'm looking at the circle but I'm taking the distance to be the length of the chord joining these two well in that case this chord is strictly shorter than the uh, arc joining these two so you, it's not a geodesic metric space as you see you can fairly easily correct this okay that is you change your distance to the length of the arc and that hasn't changed much and often we can make things geodesic metric spaces that's why it's a reasonable assumption to make another example is if I take something which is discrete like z squared in r squared so you have a bunch of points the integer lattice with again the distance inherited from r squared well here there are no paths at all <laughs> so you can't correct it so easily but instead you can embed it in a so you just embed here in a geodesic metric space in this situation okay so this was as a background I mean setup in which we can define uh, delta hyperbolicity or gromo hyperbolicity okay so gromo hyperbolicity will be delta hyperbolic for some delta okay what does this mean this is really what I have to define so it's usually just called delta hyperbolicity but um, that makes suggests it's dependent on delta which sometimes is important but we want to consider the situation and you just don't care what delta is which is the normal case okay so let's take a triangle what is a triangle so a triangle is we have three vertices p q r okay so we have p q r in x okay and we have sides l1 l2 and l3 but i'm deliberately not calling them p q q r and uh, p r because so l i are geodesics because there is no assumption that the geodesic is unique so geodesic metric space is one where geodesics exist so we're looking at triangles in a geodesic metric space we can look at triangles even uh, in the general situation okay but uh, uh, there should be a lot for these conditions to be useful okay so so definition here we have seen this in hyperbolic space so a triangle is delta 10 if each side li is contained in n delta of other sides I'll write one of these conditions to make things clear l1 is contained in delta neighborhood of l2 union l3 and two other uh, similar conditions okay so we've seen that this is true in hyperbolic space so here are the examples so one of the basic facts we saw in hyperbolic space is triangles are in fact thin h okay and we briefly saw the more extreme case of this which is a tree so i have a tree which is a graph without loops it looks something like this now if i take any triangle in a tree let me draw it well one side will look like this and another side like this and the third side would be an edge here so this is a typical triangle so in this case in fact delta equals zero okay so this is a remarkable fact any side in a tree is contained in the union of the other two sides for a triangle so this is the most extreme case of being delta hyperbolic which is uh, a tree now this definition turns out to be marvelous in that it holds for a very large class of spaces and on the other hand it uh, has very strong consequences most of the qualitative properties of hyperbolic space or trees are captured by these and there are lots of them and many constructions can be made 
but it's conceptually a bit limiting to have to restrict ourselves to geodesic metric spaces. It makes things a little clumsy. So we look at another definition which is equivalent, which does not uh, require geodesic metric spaces. So an equivalent definition. So let's start this by looking at XD, so a metric space. Okay. So, so it's not necessarily geodesic. And so here what we'll do is we'll define the Gromov product. And this formula comes from looking at a tree. So let's look at a triangle in a tree. So here is a tree and let's call these points X, Y and Z. Okay, and let's look at that. Distance between x, y is the red line. Distance between uh, y and z is the green line. And distance between x and z is the blue line. Okay, so now let's ask, what is this length? Well, I'll write down the formula for this length. In the case of the tree, it's very easy to see that this is distance between xz plus distance between yz minus distance between xy divided by 2. Okay, So this quantity is this length here. It's the length of the side between z and the nearest point projection on the geodesic from x to y. And this I'll call the Gromov product. So Gromov product of x and y based at z is this. You can write down this formula and this makes sense. This is for any metric space. So what we have done is really just made a definition which in the case of a tree, so if x is a tree, this is distance between z and xy. So the xy is path from x to y. And the path, I mean here the shortest or reduced path from x to y. So given a pair of points, you take the path and you look at the distance and here distance is the minimum distance. Okay, it's the shortest point projection from x to y. So in the case of a tree, it happens to be this, but this function formula makes perfect sense in general and we always call it the Gromov product. Okay, and so finally, what is Gromov hyperbolicity in this sense? Well, Gromov hyperbolicity is, well, to define it, we'll fix a base point Z and look at some more points. Okay, so here is X, here is Y, and on a branch here is, let's say, W. But I'll draw another tree just to uh, avoid uh, overgeneralization from one example, y. Okay. So now let's look at the Gromov product of x and w. Okay. So for a tree, well, the Gromov product of x and w based at z is the shortest distance with the path between x and w and z. So it's going to be this line. Okay. So now in this case what happens is, well this nearest point happens in this case to lie on the line between x and y. Not on the line between y and w. But it must lie because of thin triangles by looking at the triangle x, w, y, it must lie on the line, one of these two lines. Okay. In this case, of course, it could be even further away. Okay, so here the line between x and w is quite far away. But nevertheless, what you have in all situations is that this is greater than or equal to the minimum of the Gromov product between x, y, w and the y, w with z. Okay, so this lets one make the following definition. X is delta hyperbolic 
if for all x y z w what we do is what we in the case of a tree we have the absolute situation but here we allow an error well it should be greater than or equal to the minimum x y z and y w z minus delta okay so this can be taken as a definition now recall that this definition makes uh, perfect sense for all metric spaces not necessarily direct this was gromov's original definition okay and it turns out to be equivalent to the thin triangle well you can actually see that thin triangles implies this and the other way with a little more work point is that a tri thin triangle looks a lot like this so the argument i made for this being true in a tree was the side from x to w which we were seeing here is contained in the union of the sides from x to y and the side from y to w okay this side is contained in the union well in general it's if you have delta thin triangles then it's contained in a small neighborhood of this so that the same thing will hold with a little distortion of course you have to also see that the gromov product is actually close to the minimum distance projection right? by definition it's just some formula which is a linear expression okay. so this is our concept of gromov hyperbolicity